Okay, so today we're going to be making some lithium hydroxide. It is a strong alkali metal hydroxide, which is a base. Out of all of the other hydroxides which are based on alkali metals, like potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide is the weakest in terms of its basicity. Although it's the weakest, it still does have its own unique properties and uses. The two major things I'm interested in lithium hydroxide for is that A, it's a precursor to other lithium salts, and B, it can actually be used as a CO2 scrubber. A lot of lithium salts and compounds are used as drugs to treat bipolar disorder, and I might make some in a future video. However, I'm most interested in the second application that I mentioned, which is as a CO2 scrubber. When exposed to carbon dioxide, Lithium hydroxide will react and form lithium carbonate and water. For this reason, it's commonly used in things like spacecraft, submarines, or rebreathers because it can actually scrub out and pull the CO2 from the air. This way, the CO2 content is kept low and the air remains breathable. To take this one step further though, the lithium hydroxide can act as a precursor to something called lithium peroxide. The peroxide can be pretty easily made by reacting the lithium hydroxide with some hydrogen peroxide. This peroxide is a much better scrubber because not only does it react with the carbon dioxide, but instead of producing water, it produces oxygen gas. So this way, it's not actually just taking the carbon dioxide out of the air, it's taking it out but replacing it with oxygen. I do plan to make this in a future video, but for now we're just going to make some lithium hydroxide. There are two main ways that lithium hydroxide can be made. The first one is a metathesis reaction between lithium carbonate and calcium hydroxide, and the second method is simply reacting lithium metal with water. Doing the metathesis reaction at home isn't really efficient, and the cost is pretty much the same as reacting lithium with water. So that's what I opted to do. I basically just bought lithium metal off eBay and dumped it into water. I'm just going to ask you guys, please don't get mad at me because I know there's going to be a few people out there who are mad that I wasted this lithium metal. I'm going to defend myself with two points and that's A, it's something I've never done before as in I've never reacted this much alkali metal with water and I thought it could be something fun to do. Also, the second point is that making lithium hydroxide this way from the lithium metal, I actually get lithium hydroxide cheaper than I would if I bought it directly. So not only is this method a little bit fun, but I also save a bit of money. So with that being said, let's get started with the procedure. You can see here the 25 grams of lithium that I got off eBay. So I have a beaker filled with water, I put a watch glass on top to limit splashing, and I start dropping in the lithium. Lithium reacts the least violently with water out of all the alkali metals, and as long as not too much is put in at a time, we really shouldn't have a problem with fire. It reacts with water to form the lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. The lithium hydroxide dissolves into the solution and the hydrogen escapes into the air. As more hydrogen is produced, it will displace the air that's inside the beaker and eventually will just have hydrogen. At first it might be a little scary, the thought of building up hydrogen in this little closed space, but because we don't have any oxygen there, it can ignite. With that being said though, this really must be done in a well ventilated area because 25 grams of lithium metal is going to produce quite a bit of hydrogen gas. The reaction between the water and the lithium is very exothermic so the water is going to start heating up. As the water heats up, the reaction rate between the lithium and the water will also increase. At some point, I was concerned that if too much lithium was added, it could lead to a violently boiling runaway reaction. So I really strongly considered cooling it, but I found out later that that's not really that necessary. What I found interesting was that the temperature that the water achieved kind of peaked out much below the boiling point. The reason for this is something that I actually didn't predict. But basically what happens is that as the lithium reacts and produces lithium hydroxide, there'll become a point where the solution is saturated. At this point, no more lithium hydroxide can be dissolved. What would normally happen is the lithium would react with the water to produce lithium hydroxide, the lithium hydroxide would dissolve into the water, and new fresh lithium metal would be exposed and react with the water and this would just keep continuing. What happens though is once the saturation point is reached, the lithium hydroxide can't be dissolved into the water and it kind of just sticks to the lithium. 
When this happens, the reaction rate greatly decreases because only a very small amount of the lithium is exposed. Instead of being this fresh shiny metal bouncing around the surface, they become coated with white lithium hydroxide. You can see that when a bunch of the lithium is put in, there's initially a strong reaction, but once they become covered with lithium hydroxide, it pretty much dies down. Once it dies down, you can see the very evident white coated lithium floating on the top. And compared to before, the rate of bubbling is actually pretty slow. You can see here I've added a whole bunch of lithium and it's kind of just floating there. So to get things started, I pour a little bit more water in it. This way we can dissolve a little bit of the lithium hydroxide and get more of the lithium surface exposed. It starts to bubble a bit at the beginning, but again it slowly dies down. You can also see at the bottom that there's a thick layer of white powder and this is lithium hydroxide that's falling off of the pellets and sinking to the bottom. I got a little bit impatient and I went ahead and added all of the lithium that remained. I found it kind of funny that initially I thought the reaction would be too violent and I would have to slow it down, but it turned out that the reaction was too slow and I had to find ways to speed it up. So it starts bubbling like crazy when it hits the fresh new lithium, but I know that right when it gets covered with the lithium hydroxide, it's going to die down. So this is exactly what happened and once everything was coated in the white lithium hydroxide, it got pretty slow. It also solidified a little so I poked it a bit with a spatula. Eventually a lot of the water had disappeared and the reaction rate was super slow so I added a bit more water. Sadly though, this didn't do much because the coating of lithium hydroxide was just too thick. I realized at this point that it's really impossible to get away with using such little water so I transferred it to a larger beaker. I made sure to separate the saturated lithium hydroxide solution from the pellets and to keep the solid at the bottom. This way, when more water is added, it'll be all fresh water instead of just diluting some saturated solution. On top of this, to break up the lithium hydroxide layer, I used a mortar and pestle to crush them. Just exposing a little bit of the lithium underneath the layer of lithium hydroxide would greatly speed things up. The ultimate solution that someone might suggest for these problems is to simply start with more water. And my answer to that is that that is probably a better idea. But I started out this project trying to use as little water as possible, and I just want this to serve as an example that things don't always go how you want them to. So when I put it back in some water, I can see the reaction rate is actually pretty decent. Just to get things really going, I poured in a bunch more water. I let them sit there and react, and every so often I took the pellets out and crushed them more. I did this a few times and eventually there was only a very little amount of lithium left over. It kind of just sat there and didn't really react so I did exactly like I did before and I transferred it to another beaker. I then filled this with a crazy amount of water to fully react the rest. I also added some water to the other beaker to react with some of the bits of lithium that were still floating around. After I was done I was left with three different beakers. As I said before this project ended up being a lot messier than I thought it would be but I decided that this is how I would like the video to be. I like to show when things are realistic and how they don't always go as planned. So instead of reacting everything in one beaker, I'm left with three separate beakers with different concentrations of stuff. Now for the step of purification and the first thing that I questioned was how. The solubility of lithium hydroxide in water can be about 12 grams per 100 milliliters. This can lead to a huge loss because you can see the crazy amount of water that I've used and this was actually the reason why I decided not to use lots of water in the beginning. I figured that there was two ways that I could recover as much lithium hydroxide as I could from the solution, and the first was boiling it off, and the second was crashing it out. It turns out that I did both for the sake of the video, but I would honestly recommend the second method. For the first step of boiling it off, I add lithium hydroxide solution to a beaker. You'll notice that there's solid at the bottom of the beaker and it's important to add as little as possible into the bigger beaker. I add more of the lithium hydroxide solution and at this point we're ready to start boiling. As you can see here it's pretty straightforward and with strong stirring I bring the solution to a boil. As the water boils away lithium hydroxide will start to crash out and eventually at the end we're left with a bunch of solid. So this method's pretty easy, but I think the one downside is that we're exposing solid lithium hydroxide to air. My entire idea of making the lithium hydroxide was that it could react with carbon dioxide in the air, 
So exposing it to the air like this at a higher temperature, it can react a little bit. This will produce lithium carbonate as a byproduct, which is going to be pretty hard to separate out. So if someone decides to go with the boiling route, this has to be kept in mind. Honestly though, the amount that it produces is probably so little that it doesn't really matter. In my mind, this method is much superior. We have a small amount of lithium hydroxide solution here, and I pour in isopropyl alcohol. I'm sure I poured in way too much. Anyway, I start to stir after it's added. Very quickly, the solution becomes cloudy, and this is the lithium hydroxide precipitating out. The lithium hydroxide is really not soluble in isopropyl alcohol, so when it's added to the water, this destroys its solubility in the water, and it precipitates out. When left to stand for a few minutes, you can see it forms a layer at the bottom. So regardless of which method that you decided to do, everything must be vacuum filtered. The lithium hydroxide from both methods was added to the vacuum filter. It just takes a few moments to add everything, and once vacuum is pulled, most of the water goes off pretty quickly. Once the last of the lithium hydroxide is added, I keep pulling vacuum on it for several minutes to get out as much water as possible. Pulling it through the vacuum this way though is again problematic because of the thing I mentioned that it will react with the CO2 as it passes through. At this point though, you kind of just have to accept this as reality, accept that there's going to be lithium carbonate contamination, and move on. So once it was relatively dry, it's scraped out of the filter flask and added to a crystallizing dish. At this point though, it's still pretty wet and it actually exists as its hydrated form. To get to the water that's linked to the lithium hydroxide, we're going to have to dry it in an oven at around 110 degrees Celsius. So that's what I did, and when we're done, we're left with nice, dry, powdery lithium hydroxide. Again, drying it in the oven is going to react with some CO2 and produce lithium carbonate, but I accepted that loss. Once it was cooled down, it was transferred to a container. Once everything's added, we put the cap on, we label it lithium hydroxide, and we're done. The yield from this procedure is pretty close to quantitative, and that's kind of what I would expect considering we're only just reacting lithium with water. So in the end, I actually got about 82 grams of anhydrous lithium hydroxide. As I said, this reaction is pretty near quantitative, and the percent yield is around 95%. I'm pretty sure if you weren't as sloppy as I was with some of the transfer steps, you can probably get it pretty close to 100. I tried to think of some, but I couldn't think of any decent demonstrations I could do with the lithium hydroxide. When I finally get around to making the lithium peroxide, I'll have a cool demonstration for that. Again, here's a list of the videos that I'm currently editing and future videos I plan to film. In the videos being edited category, you can vote for the one that you want me to publish next, and in the future video category, you can vote for the one that you want me to film next. Also, if you're feeling generous, please donate to my Patreon account, because with a bigger budget per video, I can do more things. Also, instead of stockpiling videos, I've decided I'm going to publish them as soon as I edit them, so in the next month or so, there's going to be a lot of videos coming out. On my Patreon, I also added a milestone, and if we get to $250 per video, I'll commit to doing videos for at least six months.